So in this topic, we are discussing policies, procedures, and programs. So let's have a look what we have there. And we were discussing that we need to have a policy in the workplace and it's mandatory to have this policy. Um, we can create the policy based on the guidelines from the state policy or the country policy. So we should have policies, procedures and programs. So program, for example, to uh, improve the uh, WHS in the workplace. Uh, the awareness, this, this could include training in addition to some uh, implemented procedures like social distancing, um, hand sanitizers everywhere. We need to monitor the hand sanitizers if they are empty, we need to renew them. Uh, we, we need to have uh, a sign saying this is the hand sanitizer and use the hand sanitizer. Uh, wear masks, what if someone came without a mask, are we providing masks or not? So it's part of, uh, or some procedures here, together they are under the umbrella of the policy. So as an organization, we must have a policy and this policy will be um, uh, implemented through different procedures. Okay, so part of the policy is monitoring that. What if uh, I went to TIF tomorrow and TIF saying I must wear a mask and no smoking within the campus? What if I'm there and I'm not wearing a mask? What will happen? What are the consequences? It should be clear. I should know about that if I ignored the policy in, in TIF and started to smoke inside the campus. What will be the consequences? So I need to know, is there anyone monitoring that? If there is an area uh, signed with, with a sign saying staff only area, can, I, uh, can a student go inside? What if the student go inside? Or we should have some kind of physical control also, not only admin administrative control, not only the sign, we should have maybe a digital lock so if a student wants to break this policy, they cannot get inside because they don't have the key to this lock. Okay, if someone started to smoke, ignoring the no smoking sign, we should have some smoke sensors, detectors, and so forth. So this is part of the implementation. This is part of the uh, monitoring, managing, so we, we can take corrective actions. I have smoke detector at home. It's compulsory, it's mandatory in all homes. So, but I have some responsibility there. If uh, I'm moving something and I broke, or I hit this one and it's broken, I need to replace it. I need to replace the batteries from time to time. I need to monitor that. So I have a kind of res responsibility also because it's safety for everyone. So in that, is I, we all have, not only myself, we all have shared responsibilities. So we have um, some uh, checklist, let's show all items. So when, uh, when you join a company, they will uh, give you the policy. So sometimes it's a lengthy document, sometimes it's printed or online. So you can scan through the policies so you can just get a rough idea of what is that. Then read the summaries or the plain English versions if they are available, like a quick reference guide or uh, COVID-19 uh, new updates to the policy. So I can read just the summary if I know about the policy. Online searches. I can conduct that of the legislation or codes of practice to find information about these types of policies. Um, pay close attention to heading as they will help guide you uh, through. So 
you need to think about that. Remove distractions such as noise or interruptions when you are uh, reading. So these are the points we need to think of. Okay, here some hazard and emergency policies and procedures. So I mentioned hazards, potential risk, potential incident, potential uh, harm. So some emergency uh, policies and procedures, fire on the premises. So we evacuate the place. Of course, we can, um, if I see a fire, I can hit the alarm, break this glass and, and uh, let the alarm goes off and then maybe call the uh, triple zero or 911. Uh, we uh, evacuate the place, we follow the fire wardens, um, we go to the master point. So some organizations, they tell you, wait for the fire warden. If it's a small organization, um, so they tell you on on the second alarm, wait for the fire warden. If they didn't come for five minutes, evacuate the place and go to the master point. Some organizations, they tell you evacuate immediately without waiting for anyone. Um, some organizations tell you you can take your stuff, items. Some organizations tell you just run. Uh, like on aeroplanes, they tell you if we are evacuating the aeroplane, leave everything behind. So if there is fire on nearby premises that can impact my business, what should we do? Emergency responses, including evacuation, as we mentioned, incident and accident investigation and reporting. Should I report to whom? First aid policies, procedures. I am a first aider. Can I provide that if I'm not accredited by TIF and not the, not not everyone knows that I'm the first aider, so I cannot do that. I must have a kind of agreement or role there. Electrical faults, should I deal with them or not? Gas leaks, what to do? Bomb threats, what to do? So we have that in place in, uh, in TIFF, of course, all these types of policies, and we have updates on that. We, uh, we are attending training and so forth. So you can, as I mentioned, you can have this printed or online or both. Um, you can uh, take that as online training or face-to-face -face training workshop. So, or again, both. So the idea here, we need to tell everyone about the policy procedures, how to deal with uh, emergencies. And the most important thing is protecting everyone. So WHS procedure, there are some procedures. We IT people, we uh, sometimes we, ca we carry heavy stuff, printers, uh some servers and so forth so we need to follow that if there are smokers they cannot smoke in inside the the uh, organization uh if we are doing some uh, work uh, during weekends or evening we need to make make sure of the lighting the proper procedure to carry heavy items and so forth it's a huge list we can think of so for different uh, organizations um, how to get rid of the hazardous chemicals um, if someone uh, for the alcohol and other drug intoxication so when i was working in mining uh, it's zero alcohol policy so no alcohol at all is permitted we cannot drink alcohol uh, I'm also a scout leader, so in a scout during the, the camps uh, over the weekend, zero alcohol policy, any scout uh, hall, zero alcohol policy. But uh, some other organizations or companies, they have uh, Friday afternoon drinks and they have that in the workplace, they have drinks, free drinks provided by the uh, organization, including alcohol. So it depends on the environment 
and policies there, uh, um, the type of um, industry are working in. Um, incident investigation, if there is an incident, should I report the incident to whom? To the police or to my manager or to the WHS representative teams? Uh, what about confidentiality? Some records for students we should keep for five years, uh, 10 years, 15 years. So should we keep that uh, side visitors? Can I just take a friend of mine visiting me at TIFF? Can I take them to the staff room or not? Or we have some visitors from Microsoft or Cisco or uh, Amazon. Should we take them to which area? Should we connect them to our uh, Wi-Fi or not? So we have these policies and other policies. It's, it's a good idea to go through this list uh, multiple times, just for different uh, examples. And uh, how to use the vehicle, the speed in the parking area, the speed is, uh, what is the maximum speed if you are using uh, organization car and so forth. There are many, many things. It depends on the uh, organization type. We have some programs and uh, different programs like consulting with workers, um, family-friendly environment, uh, work-life balance. So sometimes we have flexible uh, hours. Fatigue management, if I'm tired, what can I do? How to deal with that? And these, again, these are examples. It's not everything, but some WHS programs. Uh, so family-friendly environment, I can, uh, for example, my family can visit me, spend some time with me. Not all organizations, it depends on the organization type. Again, uh, the work-life balance, how many hours you work per week, uh, uh, working times, uh, is it fly in, fly out uh, environment like mining? So for example, two weeks on, two weeks, uh, one week off, something like that. So this is the uh, quiz. What are three methods you use that help you understand and interpret procedures and other documentation? Uh, would it count to keep yourself a copy of things close by? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. What else? Do you remember that from the first slide? Let me uh, read summaries. Yes. Good. Good. What else? Yeah. Headings are a good guy. Yes. Good. Um, removing like distractions. Yeah. And you're reading them. Yes. So yes, scanning through them first to get a rough idea. So this is the answer of this question of what they are about. Reading summaries as mentioned, thank you for everyone participated. Get some videos, read without, yes, yes, correct. Remove distractions, pay close attention to headings. Yes, online searches. Yeah, plain English, yes, good. So um, we covered uh, the first two topics today, which is great. Uh, so please uh, review them. And uh, is there any question for me? Uh, about is this, this something session? we shouldn't work ahead through this, Sam? We stay at your pace when we're going through this whole module or you can you can go ahead if you want to okay so it's okay no problem mm -hmm. no problem at all um, hey sam are we doing yes. the quiz today or we're gonna do it tomorrow we're supposed to be doing the quiz today right yes the quiz is today for the previous unit yeah so we will um we will take a break then we will do the, the quiz so uh in this break you can uh, review 
something, then uh, we will uh, do the quiz. Okay. So just let me stop the recording and I'll show you what we need to do.